Uh, so good uh, morning, good day, good evening, good night to all participants here. I think we are all interested in the quality of measurement or measurement quality of our results. And I would say that we have a good quality of measurements if the client can take a decision. That is exactly what Steve just talked about. And Steve mentioned the issue where we have high uncertainty then we can even get asymmetric intervals. So if we would have an uncertainty of 20% around a value of 10, we will have an interval between 8 and 12. But if we have very inhomogeneous samples, or we are working in microbiology area, we can get over 100% uncertainty. So the interval from 10, a result of 10, could be 0 to 20 which is, is, of course, not correct, because we have me measured something. So in this case, we need to talk about a symmetric interval. So the interval in this case could probably, instead of being from 0 to 20 for a result of 10, it could be between 5 and 20. I was actually wondering how many people are working in the microbiology area. Could we have some kind of a hand up for so many people are working in microbiology. I'm not sure if that is possible, but we have a lot of participants, but maybe not so many microbiologists. I see two so far, three, four, five, that's good. Uh, so I just want to thank you. Uh, I want to tell you that I will present this standard, but I am not a microbiology myself. So in Sweden, we would say that we are running on thin ice, trying to talk about something that you don't really know. But I know something about uncertainty. So that is what I want to try to give back to you. Uh, and the content, I will just talk about microbiological analytical steps, and I will focus on reporting results and uncertainty. And then I will also talk about reporting uncertainty intervals. I mean, instead of zero to 20, we talked about five to 20, for example. And then if we go to the food area, we have to have additional components. And then just a summary. So the steps for if we have a food item, we take a sample, we homogenize it, we dilute it, and we start growing on plates, and we calculate the number of bacteria. And we do also some confirmation and we come up with a result and an uncertainty. So here is one of the focus on my presentation is how to report results. Well, if we have very low results, we talk about colony forming units that could be a bacteria, for example. If the number of bacteria we count, this is the CFU, is less than 10, we can just report a value and some text to it. But if we have values from 10 and above, we can all actually report a value and uncertainty. We could talk a little about a limit of quantification if you think about chemical measurements. And we can report uh, the value and relative uncertainty, or we can report an asymmetric confidence interval. And I will come to that later. So this is what some of the ISO standards says. It says in, in, in brief that if you have values over 10, you can report results. But if you have values below 10, you have to indicate that you are not sure about it. You can, for example, say that just microorganisms are present or it's just an estimate or something. So below 10, it's easy. And this is because one of the components that actually uncertain components the distribution of parcel is the dominating here so we don't have to think about anything else but for higher values we need to talk about the uncertainty maybe i have to take away this one can you see the full screen now yes okay good i i, I have some Let's see if I can move that one a little bit around. I don't see my whole screen myself. Uh, let's see. Okay, now it's better. Uh, so, 
So, the uncertainty approaches I will talk about, a little about the symbols, and the two most important ones. The first one is this, what we call distribution. And this is, for you microbiologists, this is, of course, something you know very well, but for other people, I have to actually talk a little about it. And then we talk about reporting uncertainty intervals and the other components. So, the uncertainty approaches, we can talk, we can be within the laboratory to estimate uncertainty, or we can be, take results from between laboratories. So, in, within the laboratory, we can do a model, or we can actually do a single lab validation, or in-house. I think we'll talk about that also in this conference. But in microbiology, they talk about the global one. We can also talk, look at the between laboratories, when we make a standard, or we can do just look at the proficiency testing. The proficiency testing is less reliable. I will come to that, but I will start talking about the single lab validation. And this is what this standard talks about. This is a very, very general standard. Uh, and it talks both about colony counts and another way of estimating, which is called most probable numbers. It does not talk about sampling, but subsampling. It does not talk about bias. And in this case, it refers to a NOR test report for that. So let's look at the symbols we are using. The first one is the number of counts we actually count. That is also giving us later down the distribution of Poisson uncertainty. Then we have the standard uncertainty. And then we have the within laboratory or intermediate that is a spread within the laboratory. If a client gets a result January, July or September, that's the spread that he would see. And then we, of course we have the spread between laboratories. And then we have those two components that I will focus on. The operational or technical uncertainty. That's the way you perform the measurements and the distributional. Uh, if you have food items, you can have very inhomogeneous sample. You can also have a matrix component. We can take everything to a combined uncertainty and then we can calculate the expanded uncertainty as usual. The units in microbiology can be several ones. So if we have a result of 15 CFU, we can report it a standard uncertainty of five. We can also report it as 30%. We can report it in natural logarithms, which will be 0.3, or in common logarithms. And we can, the uncertainty given can be recalculated to other units. That's very well described in the standard. But I will focus on percent here. So, the uncertainty from in-house validation, we look at the intermediate precision, the precision we get between days. And uh, this consists then of two components, the operational and the distributional. And we can add them together to get this main uncertainty, the combined uncertainty. So, the, we will now start, talk about the distributional, the Poisson uncertainty. And this is main uncertainty if you have counts below 10, but if you have counts over 10, we had also to add the technical uncertainty, operational. So this is how it works. We have a sample, one liter sample, with 10 colony forming units, we take 10 subsamples from that. And then by statistics, in some samples we get zero, in some samples we get two, we can even get four in some cases. So this is an uncertainty component that we actually can calculate from mathematics. And it's, if you want to, the formula is just one over the number and take the square root of that times 100. So if, for example, if we calculate, if we count 100, counts, this will be 10%. If we only count one, it will actually be 100%, the standard uncertainty. So we are talking about high uncertainty here. Now we can see that this combined uncertainty, the blue one, consists of two components. One is the green that varies with uh, conformity units. 
and one that is stable. So I have the number of colony forming units on the x-axis and I have the uncertainty percent on the y-axis. So we have a 20% technical or, or operational uncertainty, which is the same independent of how many CFU we have. Then we have the Poisson that changes with the number of CFU. And then we add them together and you get the blue. Now we would like to estimate the red one. And then you can see that it's not good to estimate the red one when the green is very big. So we need to be at the right end here at 50 uh, CFU. The Poisson is actually less than the red and it's much easier to estimate it there. So this operational uncertainty, we need to estimate. And this is given in the standard. And it's estimated the way that we actually can measure the within laboratory reversibility, and we can calculate the distributional, and then we can calculate the operational. So for example, if the UCR is five, the distributional is three, then we can see that the operational is four. That's the way uh, Pythagora works. The problem is then that if the operational is very low, then it's very difficult to estimate it. So we need to be where the distribution is low, let's say at high count. The standard tells you on a little bit how to do this. So it, it's difficult to work with bacteria several days. So we have to take the same sample and then we try to analyze it in a different way, with different person, different equipment and so on. And then we can calculate the difference between the standard deviation between the, these two results. And that is called the global approach in the standard. It's used uh, a lot. If you take an example here, we have uh, taken a sample, we got one count which was five, another one which was eight. We got a mean value of 6.5. From that mean value, we can actually calculate the Poisson or the distribution to be 39%. And we can also calculate the standard devi deviation between five and eight, and this is 33%. Then we can repeat this for many samples. And this is just an example of the calculations done in the standard. The important thing here is that we have uh, done several, taken several samples. We have analyzed them in duplicates. And then we have calculated the different uh, components. And then we have tried to, to, to calculate the technical uncertainty as a difference. So you can see that sometimes it's negative and sometimes it's positive. But the mean value here is actually positive. This is now calculated in common logarithm scale, but we can convert that value. So the value we get here, 0086 as a square, we can calculate it to be 21% as a standard uncertainty. So now we have this operational uncertainty, which is the same all over. And then we can actually calculate the combined uncertainty and in the standard, it's also told how to calculate the confidence interval using a logarithms. So we get a mean and the max value. And here you can see an example how it works. This is case where we have a, a technical uncertainty of 15%. You see that is the same all over. And then we have the colony counts that we counted from 10 to 100. And here you can see the asymmetric interval. So for example, if you have 10 counts, we get something between 5 to 20. If we get 100, it's not so much asymmetric. We have 70 to 143, but it's still a bit asymmetric. Now we have to think that we can also have additional uncertainty components, so we can have even higher uncertainty. And uh, I will not go into detail, but I will take an example where we actually 
use proficiency testing instead. Try to estimate it. And this is, as I said, not so reliable, uh, but it can give some indication. In this case, it is a proficiency testing uh, done in the Nordic countries, and all the labs are using, in principle, the same uh, procedure to estimate it. And we can see a variation between the laboratories. And we can actually come up with a pooled standard deviation of 41%. So this could actually be, be used as an estimate. And in order to use that, we have a test result in this case of 180 CFU per gram, but we only counted 20 colony forming units. So we need to see if this one is still very big. And we do the calculations and we come up that it is about 22%. But if we add 22 plus 41, it doesn't make a big difference. So it's 47%. And I think 41% would be very similar. So it's not so important. We can, in most cases, use this value all over. But to give you an example, how would it look then? Well, instead of reporting plus minus 794%, we report a confidence interval. So we report that the result is 180 colony forming units per gram. And it could be somewhere between 82 to 395. So this is an asymmetric confidence interval. And of course, this tells the client much better information than just giving a percent value, close to 100%. So to sum up, price. If we have low uh, CFU, we can just report a value with the text added, added. If we have from 10 and upwards, we can report the value and the uncertainty. But we can also report an asymmetric confidence interval. And I think this is the important thing, that microbiologists has always worked with high uncertainty. So we, who are not microbiologists, can actually learn from that and start using this asymmetric interval. And we have actually talked about that in the guide that Steve just uh, talked about. And we call it the uncertainty factor, but it's exactly the same thing as given in this standard. So I want to end there. I would thank you very much for listening. And we are working on a new version of a Eurochem guide, which is accreditation for microbiological laboratories, where we actually will include this information. So thank you very much. And I stop there. <laughs>